So, let's talk about this patch. Real talk, and then I'm gonna go. So let's, uh, I'm gonna do a, a, a patch update 2.7 rundown. This is probably not gonna be the patch which runs out of beta. I assume they're gonna change some more stuff because they made so many changes here and some are good and some aren't good. So we'll look through them all. So the general changes are all quality of life uh, updates here. Um, obviously various performance improvements, anti-stropic, whatever that means, anisotropic, I don't know what that means. V-Sync is really important. If you are playing Age of Mythology Extended Edition and you've not ticked this on, you need to tick this on. This is like the most important thing because it means that if you have a crappy computer, it's not gonna burn your graphics card to dust. Because what it does is it matches your FPS with your monitor refresh rate. So you should be getting something like 60 FPS instead of a billion FPS. <laughs> Anyways, um, deathmatch settings aren't that important, but there's nothing here that really looks yeah, there's nothing here that looks too interesting. Like this is some really, really minor changes. Uh, we got some nerfs here to to Norse and to an Atlantean nerfs basically, and then Town Center victory conditions there for some reason. That seems that seems a little bit silly if you ask me. It's meant to be deathmatch. Um, bug fixes. This is really good. The exploit of Poseidon's lore ability. If you saw that video that the Spiving Brit put out, it no longer works. So that's gotta feel good. Um, all this other stuff's not very important. Uproot God Power no longer gives permanent line of sight is really good. Uh, that doesn't change much. Uh, this is this is kind of important. Earthquake being able to, earthquake, tornado and tsunami being able to uh, damage town centers under construction. That helps a little bit. I feel like there's, I was thinking about this before and I think Undermine's supposed to, like it makes sense, that Undermine would be able to be used on a town center being constructed. I'm pretty sure you can use Undermine on Nilla. And if you can use it on Nilla, then you should be able to use it everywhere. Anyways, Frost, God Power affects Immortals now. That's normal. I'm not sure what that does. Docs attack stuff, good. Cabinets do, yeah, 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 yeah. Sea snakes can now attack water mythological units. I didn't know they couldn't do that, but they are normally dead by the time myth units come out anyways. Uh, Tusk of the Iron Boar was OP, no longer OP. Bow of Artemis now affects gold cost of Symphilian birds. Why? Isn't Bow of Artemis... What is that? Okay. I'm not sure that what that is, but I'm sure... Oh, Bow of Artemis. I didn't think that affects any myth units. Oh, oh it affects centaurs. Okay, 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 okay. It's all good. Uh, Trios Bow Relic now affects Throwing Axemen. Sure, various small colonies sound picks. Okay, this is what we're interested in. Civilization Balance Guard Tower Technology from 70% to 40%. Or did you just nerf the cost of Guard Tower Technology? I'm not sure I like that. I think that these um, these upgrades should only be invested in once you can afford them and it should not be a strategy to go for it. You know, you have to be ahead in order to get them and I feel like making them cheaper does beg the question, are you trying to make the game more defensive? Um, so I'm not sure about those, but okay, we'll go along with it. Iron wall, yada, yada, yada. Reduce the health of fortified technologies. All of this is reduced health. I like that. I don't like having uh, games where walls slow the game down. So anything that can make people play the game faster is better for me. Secrets of the, tech technology, uh, Secrets of the Titans technology reduced from 90 seconds to 75 seconds. I think, honestly, I think the Secrets of the Titans technology should be... Uh, I think that the secrets of the tech. I think this this technology should be sixty seconds. I don't. I don't like the nerf that Vibli made on it, and I don't think that Atlantean was overpowered or anyone was overpowered because of Titan. I didn't think Titans were overpowered. I just thought they were a really important part of the Atlantean strategy. 
and nerfing nerfing it by 30 seconds and then 15 seconds the 15 seconds doesn't matter that much but i feel like because it doesn't matter that much i don't see why you need to nerf it do you know what i mean like people should be going fast titan if they feel like that's the correct strategy and it's not it's the strategy is not too strong if they're fi- if they're able to get the titan out fast that generally means you're playing the matchup wrong in my opinion well, unless the, unless you're preparing to fight against a fast titan then that's fine um reduce the scarab pendant relic bonus for non-myth units yada 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 reduce the bonus damage against buildings provided by naval oxypolis technology okay i like this but also i don't like this i like it because i hate again i hate playing against seed ships but that just means that you need to be more you, you don't have to it, it but I don't like it because I feel like siege ships are a very important part of the game and they can really help out a player that is behind to get back in front. And it does mean that uh, the players that adapt to the map the best are in the right uh, situation. Um, so, meh. Take it or leave it. Don't mind. Either way. Uh, increased pierce damage from dealt by bowling old from 10 to 15. Okay. Okay. So, I think towers shoot 10 damage. Two arrows, so they shoot 20 damage. Boiling all only attacks once, so it does 14 damage. So a tower that shoots arrows deals uh, deals 20 damage versus boiling oil, which deals 14 damage. On top of that, I'm not sure boiling oil is affected by crenellations or not. That's maybe something, but um, let's think about it. Even if it is affected by crenellations, you get the 150% bonus. So that goes up to 28 plus 7 is 30, what, 35? Um, versus uh, 20 plus, um, well, versus 10 plus 150 times two. So that's, it's a lot, it's a lot more damage you're getting out of uh, the arrows. Now, if you could make it so that Watchtower is prioritized shooting arrows over boiling oil. So uh, if there, if there's a, so if it's, when it's picking its next target, it attacks the furthest one away from it rather than the closest one to it, I'd get boiling oil every single game um, just because there's no reason not to. But because you get boiling oil, uh, because boiling oil uh, attacks the closest unit to it first or retargets the closest unit to it first, it means that boiling oil will always be being used instead of arrows. So when you buy the technology, you're simply just limiting the amount of damage you get uh, from your towers. So it doesn't make sense to ever buy it. Even if it gets a buff by four damage, it's still six damage weaker than, than arrows and therefore do not get this technology still. Um, monkeys and baboons have their health reduced by from 45 to 25 and then pierce armor reduced. Okay. This is just to make hunting from monkeys more viable. I think, um, I'm not sure if I care or not. I, I think it doesn't matter, but uh, everyone who ever hunts from baboons and monkeys knows that you need to take seven villages or six six villages to that that place that the monkeys are, so that they can one hit the baboons or the monkeys. I think it's six villages kills a monkey, so you kill the monkey with six villages right next to your granary, and it's fine. It's kind of just like hunting from stuff. It's just you have like a longer downtime because you have to shoot the arrows more often. That's the reason why monkeys aren't very good hunt, but they're still hunt. It's still better than berries right uh atlantean walls no longer cost 50 percent more uh yeah that's whatever no one builds walls as atlanteans it's just not worth it increase the maximum range of guys lots from eight to ten that's good for gaia increase the movement speed for chrono smith units blah, blah, blah. not sure why this is a thing i guess chronos is a um siege unit race and one of the weaker gods so anything to help him out but it doesn't really help out all too much. Um, Carnivora increased HP. Yeah, I like that. This this um this god needs to be able to be a worthwhile pickup in the right situations for Uranus and and, and Gaia. Right? You can't. You got. You have to give them a reason to go uh, Oceanus. You like instead of just Prometheus every single game. So any, every single buff to this is good. Chaos, I hated this change on Vubly and I hate it on um, and I hate it on, on in the patch in this patch as well. Um, 
it's just it doesn't make sense it's it's basically bolt right basically it's bolt you can use your chaos you can kill a heroic age or a mythic age myth unit and why do you get more than one charge of that i think you get like three charges of chaos it's way too strong uh it's just way too strong and then you also convert human units as well so like the best use for this is to just like send a unit in um cast chaos and then run the unit away and then the, they have to kill those units and it's just like well you just traded that for free resources and an atlantean's heroic age is not meant to be strong we should we should we should uh talk about power spikes of different civilizations norse's heroic age is supposed to be strong egyptians late game is supposed to be strong their heroic egyptians heroic age mid, mid to late heroic age is meant to be strong Greeks classical age and heroic age is meant to be strong. Atlanteans classical age is supposed to be the strongest and they're supposed to be able to get to the mythic age really, really fast because their mythic age is strong in the early mythic age because they get access to things like Tartarian Gate and Vortex and then Titan is supposed to be a possibility for Atlantean but making your heroic age strong doesn't make sense for me. Deconstruction increases is fine. Um, it does mean that they can use their deconstruct on your early dock. So if you're ever playing against Kronos on on a, on a water map, just build two docks straight away. Just build two docks straight away and hide the second one somewhere else. They'll use deconstruct. You get the wood back and you can build the fishing ships later. It's fine. The list I'm reading now ain't complete or correct. Nakamura has the real one. Can you post the link to the real one, please? And then I'll transition over to that one. If you don't mind. Um, architects now increase the sky passage pierce armor. Oh, that's just a that's just bugs, right? Surely. That surely that was already supposed to be a thing. Um uh, it's fine, we'll just go through it. Even if it's even if it's not hundred percent accurate, I'm sure that most of it's correct. At least some of it's correct. Architects, Tartar NG8, PS Armor, 60%, 85%, channels. Reduced the research cost from 25. I like this change. This change is really good. 100 gold, five favor. This technology is really good. You can also buy it from uh, your, you can also buy it from your temple. Um, this is a really good quality of life change for Gaia. Um, just because you can save your villages a bit faster, you can run your villages around, you can do like some late game builds, makes Gaia pretty fun in, with, with the fast things. I don't like the change where channels affect your caravan units. I don't think they don't, I don't think uh, Gaia needs that extra help in her economy late game. If Gaia gets to late game, she's already, she's already strong enough. She does not need channels on caravan units. Um... Focus now increases Oracle hack damage. Bonus. Yeah, no one, no one's gonna buy that. That costs too much, and it doesn't do anything. Oracle hero is bad. Uh, Halo of the Sun, Fire Siphon Crush. Reduce the bonus for Fire Siphon Crush. Episodes. Okay, whatever. I'm not sure that matters all too much. It's a bit of. I'm not sure if it's a nerf or it's a buff because you get 15% pierce damage bonus. So they actually deal damage to units as well, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, heroic Renewal, reduced regeneration freight from 2.5 to 2.0. Why? I don't understand that one. I don't get it. I don't know why you're nerfing the... Uh, I don't know why you're nerfing that. Maybe there was something that was really OP with it, but that just seems that just seems silly. That just seems like I'm just changing numbers because I can. Um okay, IO Guardian reduced the favor cost from twenty five to fifteen. That's just that's just trying to trying to make the uh what is it called? The Argus that people buy that Argus technology, but no one's gonna no one's really gonna buy it because the unit's not very good. It's like, it just gets killed too easily by everything else. 
it's like if you're playing Egyptian, you could get mummies and kill it. If you're playing, if you don't have Osiris, you just get priests and kill it. Um, surely, like a couple of fire giants kill the uh, kill the Argus before it gets onto them, or whatever. There's a bunch of like, it's just not very. It just doesn't seem very good. And no, no change to it's going to help it, but whatever. Now it's a stone reduced to the bonus damage dealt to buildings from 200% to 275%. Yeah, that's fine. I think these units, I think these units are actually really good for Atlantean, the, um, the Contarius heroes, but you have to devote so much population into it and people can defend against it fairly easily, especially like Egyptian. Yeah, hero HP regen was a problem in deathmatch, but... We aren't playing deathmatch. It's fine. Rhea's gift increases the favor re re reduction effect of purchasing technologies from negative 25 cents to negative 50 percent. That one's good, but you only get you don't get this until heroic age, right? It's, and also, Atlantean just gets so much favor for free. They don't do anything and they just get favor. I'm not sure about that, but okay. Hey, Banner Boy, thank you for the follow. I appreciate oh, not a follow. Thank you for res resubscribing for two months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Legend. Um, units. Argus. Okay, here's the buffs for Argus. Argus needs the buffs. It's a really weak unit. Special attack range 2 to 3 is really nice. Um, automatons. Okay, here's a big one. Automatons are very, very strong now. 50 HP, H, 50 HP is huge for automatons. Now Gaia has uh, a very, very strong classical myth unit to go through. And I think this puts, uh, puts Leto over the edge of Oceanus on land maps for Gaia. You just want to go Leto just for automaton. And you want to build them. I think I think this actually helps out Gaia more than you think. Because now Gaia has an answer to myth units as well. Because you can she can just build a bunch of automaton, even get the upgrade for automatons, make them super strong, and then she can fight against like Loki and stuff with Kyra Ballister or um or like Hero Mamillo. Maybe you can't build Hero Mamillo if you're building automatons, but yeah. Carabalus now benefits from armor upgrades. I didn't realize that Carabalus didn't benefit from armor upgrades. But isn't it considered a siege unit? Bit odd, bit odd. I know it's from like an infantry building, but... Or like a, just like a base unit building. So it doesn't make sense that it doesn't. Uh, did they nerf Carabalus to compensate? I'm not sure. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Citizen hero reduced the favor cost from three to two. The population cost from four to three. Were they four population? Well, that's well, that's really good then. Citizen hero is at three population instead of four population. The favor cost is is actually important as well because here's the thing you can do with um, uh, uh, Atlantina. You can actually hit the uh, you can actually hit the max max civilian unit population and not feel so bad about it. Right? Wait, do uh do normal citizens cost three? Normal citizens cost three pop. That's crazy. So they're normal. So there's no reason not to heroize your hero your your citizens. So you want to get your five hero citizens and then also get all of your your normal citizens and now your economy is on the same league as like an 80 villager thing, because you've got um what 30 villagers and your villagers operate most of them operate at was it 10 hero citizens? Jeez. Yeah, you're, you're like, I don't think, I think this is actually like sleeper. This is probably, this is probably bad. And I don't think people, I don't, maybe they haven't thought about this very well. Because uh, Atlantean, Atlantean's late game was weak because they couldn't get the uh, resources in to keep on fighting properly. But if you give them citizen heroes at three population, then that means they can build more normal citizens, which means they can get more resources, which means they can fight better. Uh, and on top of that, like hero citizens, you use them on your front line to build. It's great. It's just great. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And they're really expensive to get. They're super expensive, but 
late game, it's all about getting resources, more resources, right? So you don't do it until until after you've got all of the technologies. But as soon as you get all the technologies, that's where you start spending your excess resources because you just want to keep on getting further ahead. Dryads reduce crush armor. I didn't realize they had 99% crush armor. They're a myth unit. They shouldn't have 99% crush armor. Uh, fire siphon, increased crush damage. Yeah, fire siphon, increased pierce damage. Okay, so fire siphon now can be used against units and deal some damage against them. So that's nice for them, but... Uh, mostly the uh, the crush damage increase is really good. Man of War, nobody uses that. Satya, this one's kind of important as well. This is another another buff to... Um, I can't even remember what the god's called. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know what this uh, Satya... Well, what the god's called, but these are really strong. These Satya are really strong now. Like that, that this just means that um, there is kind of no point in going fair. Like these units are just just way too. This these units just push. Like on top of the chaos being overpowered right now, it just pushes. Um, it just pushes over Thayer. Now there's no point in going Thayer. Like Thayer is great because you get five, um, five free pop units. Um, but. Now it doesn't matter because these units are worth these satire are worth it to just do it. So I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think that they need to be this strong. Like you've increased their pierce damage and their special pierce damage. This is eight extra spit pierce damage. This isn't a small change. Like a lot of these changes aren't small changes. I think that's one of my biggest issues with patch changes is like maybe maybe I'm just behind the eight ball, but and everyone's thought about it enough. But I don't feel like Satya need to be strong. Again, the heroic age of Atlantean is just not meant to be that powerful. And how do you counter Satya? Like they're kind of, aren't Satya kind of like they're kind of like um what do you call it? Manticore. And Manticore on mass are really strong, but they're really hard to mass because they cost a lot. Whereas Satya, on top of getting free favor because you're Atlantean. They're not that expensive, like 200 wood or something, 250 wood, which is 50 wood less than um, Manticore and less favor as well. Um, so that's strong, but okay. Servant reduced favor cost 15 to 12. That's fine. Nobody really builds those. Terma increased range. I like these changes where the heavy, uh, heavy tier and champion tier give you more range. I think the heavy Terma should go from zero to one and then champion Terma is another zero to one instead of zero to two for heavy Terma. But um, that's fine. Nobody really builds Terma late game anyways. You basically just build them until you get late game and then you stop building them because they're not very strong. Onagon, yeah, whatever, that's fine. Nobody builds Mirror Towers, or at least they shouldn't. Oh, reducing the build cost. Maybe maybe it matters. Oh, benefits from weapon upgrades as well. That's good, that should happen. Um, all right. Chinese increase the rate at which villagers collect food by 5%. Okay, so apparently their gather rate was too slow. Garden from 30. I like this. These these gardens are good. You can do like a really, really fast advance time with Chinese and get a garden out at the same time. Like four minute advance time with a garden. Uh, Peggy was doing it for a while when he was like learning the gods. Uh, Fuzi, less construction now, reduce the cost of towers and castles by 50%, yada, 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 reduce the fire. What? What does that mean? I'm not sure what that means. But if that means the castles cost uh, like 150 wood, 150 gold, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely bonkers. Um, yeah, Jeffy says the Chinese have to manually drop off 20 food, food 20 seconds into the game in archaic to just make villages. So you're saying that the, the blessed construct, so you're saying Fuzi castles cost 150, 150, or is it 200, 200 or something? That's crazy. Shenong reduced violence to splash area of three to two damage. Yeah, Fire Lancers are really strong units, so that's good. Shenong increased the bonus damage dealt to buildings by the Sitting Tiger. Okay. 
cool cool barrage increase the minimum damage 500 600 against radius and it's still now it's 100 percent suspicious barrage is the arrow shooting thing it doesn't actually deal that much damage to villagers at all um but you can use it to kill like a pharaoh <laughs> Earth Dragon reduced health 5,000 to 2,500. That's good. This unit was ridiculously strong. Uh, it's just a general nerf to that. Geyser can now be placed on water. Frakes, okay, that's cool. Geyser's kind of like Shockwave, basically. Great Flood does more damage. Ooh, does like 100% bonus damage to town centers. Okay, so Great Flood is kind of like a tornado or, or an earthquake, which is really good. Tsunami, what's this? Produce persistent hack damage for 7.5, 5.5. The persistent crush damage for maximum villager health damage. Okay, so it can only do so much damage to villagers. You can only kill 800 HP worth of villagers. That's still a lot of villagers. It's still like 15 villagers or something for, off the top of my head. Uproot lifespan, this is good. Need to nerf this. This is still too strong. Uproot, I've played games and uproot's still too strong. You basically what you want to do with basically the game plan with China is to like do a really fast heroic gauge. Um and then and then send a unit into your opponent's base, cast up root on the center of their base, and then it's gonna kill every single one of their houses. If they build them if they built their houses around their towers like you're supposed to, it just kills them all. And then you just uh and then you just like it's crazy. If it says uh, it doesn't say in the patch list, the center now also have a minimal AOE damage. What does that mean? They have a minimal. They they have a minimum AOE damage. Minimal AOE damage. They don't have very high, very large AOE damage. It's still crazy though. Once you get a big, yeah, I don't know. I still think Satya are way too strong. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, technology. Heavenly Fire, I don't know what that does. Tiger Spirit, I don't know what that. Increased both health and movement speed bonuses, 15 to 20%. That's fine. Cataphract, reduced pierce damage. That's nerfing. Reduced bonus damage to North Infantry, 300% to 250%. Damage now deals 100% bonus. But uh, siege units. Okay. Now this is the interesting one. Check on you range reduced to six from sixteen to fourteen. Increased pierce damage from four to seven. So uh, Chokonu used to shoot two arrows. They now shoot one arrow. So they're basically like a Toxite. Chokonu are Chukonu, Chukonu. So um, they are basically a Toxite. But China doesn't have a very strong. Uh, classical age composition they can make halberdier and chokonu are kind of the only thing you can build so gods like atlantean do really really well especially gods like people who can micro really well and just hit and run they can just come in and take out a couple of units and leave take out come in and take a couple of units out um it's real good but china needs to work out you need to work out a way to deal with that i think you just need to build i think the current way to play china is to get out five heroes and once you have those five heroes, it's really hard for your opponents to, to deal with them. And on top of an army as well. But I don't, I don't know. You still just basically just build archers against China and they can't do anything. Dragon Turtle, 100%. Yeah, that, uh, heroes, uh, myth units are supposed to do, deal damage to myth units. Bonus damage to myth units. Phylance, reduced health from... Okay, here's the interesting one. Reduced health 80 to 65, pierce damage 8.0 to 6.5, increased increased crush damage 10 to 12. So looks like they've tried to make violence less of a unit you use against other units. However, it's still really strong. Like 65 health. Um it's just like the range on a violence. Once you get out a bunch of them, they're super strong. General, I don't actually know what general does. Reduced cost. I think it's another hero. Halberdier. This was an interesting one that we read uh, earlier on the stream. Um, uh, cavalry do 110% instead of 130%. I mean, Halberdier do bonus damage. So they that's not 110% in, 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 in like double plus 10%. It's just plus 10%. So they have like seven base attack. Give 10% more, so it's now 7.7. 7. 
But basically, Harbour Deer are basically like a hoplite, except with a little bit of bonus against cavalry. And so you don't want to build cavalry against China. Uh, immortals, 130 to 160. Immortal adjusted the archaic damage modifier. 90%, 75%. They gave them an increased health? Why? They're already strong. Okay. Junk Shi increased special recharge from 12 to 16. Favor 20, 25. So they just nerfed that. Yeah, all of all of um all of China's myth units were quite strong. So just nerfing that one's a bit interesting. Or maybe they nerfed the other ones as well. Monks reduced the conversion range from 5 to 11. Can now no longer convert frozen or stone units, increases the base convert time on human soldiers from 6 to 11. That's good. This is this is a good amount of time. 6 to 9, convert time 10 to 11. Monks, monk, the people like monk, people would play China and then just make uh, just make monks. And it was stupid. And some gods just can't count, could not counter it. Because there's ways to counter it. Like you just make heroes, basically. But monks, they shouldn't, that's just like a silly strategy. The, this like units that can convert other units is just silly. Uh, Mountain Archer reduces pierce damage from 7 to 5, increases the bonus damage up to cavalry from 200% to 300%. Um, okay, so it just makes basically make looking like mountain archers are becoming more of just a unit you use against cavalry because they nerf this by a lot and then they give them a lot more bonus against there. So they're just becoming like more of a more of a unit you use when your opponent's making cavalry. But they're also like heroic age or late game units, right? So you don't really want to build them. I mean, nobody making cavalry late game. Quillen is reduced. Not sure why that is. Quillen's a strong unit. It's kind of like a Sphinx. It is, in fact, it is a carbon copy of the Sphinx, so it should cost the same as a Sphinx, right? Isn't it meant to be called? Okay, whatever. Doesn't really matter. I think um, I think if you can get Quillen out, that's really really good. This unit and like just keep making a lot of Quillen. Scout cavalry reduced movement speed from six to five point seven five. Attack damage seven to six. Just nerfing this unit. This unit was a little bit too strong and you get like two free ones at the start of your game. And also giving a bonus against a caravan and archer. So actually just like, basically just make, giving them more of a, uh, a role in the game instead of just being really good. Vermilion bird. Uh, yeah, this unit was too strong, so that's good. Chariot arch, more chariots, reduce training time. These were the late game units. Not sure, not sure. I think they were maybe just too weak and no one was building them, but... Maybe they get built now. I have to look into it. White Tiger reduced favor cost thirty to twenty-seven. Increased attack damage twenty to thirty. Jump attack damage from hundred to two hundred. Is this just all buffs for White Tiger? It looks like. Yeah, it just looks like the White Tiger is a really strong unit now. So you should build it. That's a good late game unit. Uh, Egyptian, here we go. This is the interesting stuff. Increased age one damage modifier for set animals from 0.3 to 0.65. Can now attack in archaic. Oh, that's good. Um, set needs a way to defend their priest. Uh, there was this, this thing where like everyone who was playing against set would just try and find the, their priest in the early game. You couldn't convert any animals. I think animals are still too strong. Maybe. But who knows? Locust Swarm increases the hack damage from 20 to 30 and the area effect from six to nine reduce the total number of swarms from four to one and the duration from 27 to 22. This is a nerf. And this means that if you react really quickly to the Locust Swarm, you can save your villages. So the idea behind this one is basically they use their Locust, you run away. They all take a lot of damage, but they all live. Locus, but if you don't, they'll all die really, really fast. Like the, you just won't, you won't be able to, you won't be able to look away and just expect your villagers to all run in the opposite direction and all survive. They'll just all die. Um, Plague of Serpents increased the spirit serpent wander distance four to eight. Spirit of Serpents now benefit from army upgrades. I uh, don't know if I like this, but okay. Uh, shifting sounds reduce the visual rays from 12 to 10. Uh, yeah, shifting sounds fine. Okay, here's interesting. Shifting sounds increase the minimum HP to shift to 1,000. It was 400. The maximum to 3,000. was 4,000. 
reduced the minimum villager HP shift to 70, it was 75, and the maximum 70 it was 600. So now shifting sands looks like you can only take one villager, which is great. It's great. Uh, it used to take um, three villagers or something. Crazy. Uh, Acts of Vengeance increased the hack damage from 10% to 20%. Why? This unit, this this is already good. This isn't like this this the uh, the the horror technology which makes Axemen deal more damage to buildings. They're already really strong and they cost nothing. So Desert Wind increased. Sure, that's fine. That's what it should be costing. Feet of the Jackal. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Feral. Feral's really good now. Uh, basically, if you get if you get any significant amount of uh, animals with set in the archaic age, you should buy Feral. Uh, Necropolis. That's fine. But yes, Things of the Sun is also that's also a good good upgrade now. But also, that's uh, Things of the Sun is a uh, I think that's the segment segment upgrade. So no one goes segment anyways. So it doesn't it's not going to say anything. I okay, think maybe you could go, maybe it'll be a good idea for set play, set, uh, yeah, set to, or raw players to go through segment. Can you go? Yeah, yes. Set a raw players to go through segment against uh, Chinese so they can get Bone Bow and Slings of the Sun. And then you, they can just go Chariot Archers, Slingers and, and, and destroy, uh, and destroy the, the Chinese. Uh, Camry. Camry increased food for from 40 to 50. This is good. Camry should always have been 50. 40 food is too little for them. Uh, Camry are always supposed to be just a unit that's a distraction unit. You don't want to have to, you should not be able to mass Camry and have it work. I think that was a big issue that we were seeing with Ra in that Ra could just cast rain and then just make a bunch of Camry and then they have an army that's really strong on when it shouldn't be. Like Camry aren't meant to be that strong. Uh, catapult three to four population. Eh, take it or leave it. I I think I like the catapult costing three population. Maybe you could have nerfed it some other way, but it's it did need a nerf. But four population maybe too much of a nerf. Uh, Kopesh Hagrid just made this change because he wants to use Kopesh more. He loves them. I I think these units are still useless. Still useless units. It's you should just make uh you should just make spearmen. They're just a meme unit. Leviathan, nobody builds Leviathans. They're not that good. Mercenary, tra increased training time from one second to two seconds. Um, look, I think that the way to nerf Mercenary is that they should lose HP down to one. Um, yeah, they should lose HP down to one. That should be how they operate. Instead of having a timer, they should just like, as soon as they spawn, they should lose their HP all the way down to one. That should just be how they work. And that 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 should just be what mercenary are. They're too strong. And even with this, with this uh, nerf, they're still too strong. Um, all right, so Pharaoh reduced the bonus construction speed. When Pharaoh should not be allowed to empower a wonder that's not fair to any other race. Should not be able to empower a wonder. Um, but it's good that they've nerfed it. Uh, Phoenix, increased crush damage. Now deals 100% bonus damage from units. That's really strong. Phoenix is already strong. Like Phoenix is a really strong unit. Because you can't, it's like, especially like against Greek where you can only really attack a Phoenix with your, um, with your ranged, your classical ranged hero unit. And it's just like, you just can't kill. If they if they get out like three Phoenix, it's, you just can't kill the Phoenix. But nobody really knows about that. So it's fine. Um, what are you saying? Order about every villies are slower on everything. So empowering is kind of fair. Um, no, they are slow, but also, I don't know. I, I, I just don't think that you should be able to empower a, a win condition. Thank you so much for the donation, Benavoy. I really appreciate it. You deserve this for calling mercenaries out and suggesting the best nerf in history. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate the donation, my friend. 
Um, where are we up to? Priests, reduced. Okay, again, priest nerfs onto the wonder is fine. I just don't think that they should. I just don't think that they should be empowering the wonder. Sea turtle, uh, yeah, nobody builds sea turtles. Slinger, the heavy and champion slingers now have plus two range burns. That's good. That's the same thing they did with Terma. Um, so you want to be getting your heavy upgrades really, really fast with slingers. That's really important. Uh, champion is an extra two, so it's, it's basically plus four range when they're champions, but nobody really builds slingers late game anyways. So the heavy slingers are really good, but champion slingers probably won't see much play. So of Osiris, reduced, yeah, fine. Siege camp, increase gold. Oh, I like this. I like this change. Siege camp should, should cost more than more than 25 gold. 75 gold? Mm. I think 100 gold is actually about right for the siege camp. Um, it's really strong building. You you Maybe 75 is fine, but I still think people will just build two of them just because they're so cheap. But 100, you have to think about it. Uh, and like if you build, it's like Egyptian players, especially in like Egyptian wars, they'd go Migdol Stronghold to work, Siege Workshops straight away and then they'll just spam out Siege Towers and it's not fun. Uh, okay, Greek. Increase base faith of gather. So they've got a faster faith of gather rate. I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe they just don't get as much favor as everyone else, but Centaur are going to be an issue then. Um, reduce starting favor from 15 to 10, uh, as well as faith of gather bonus for it. Okay, so this gets a big nerf. This one, 15 to 10 favor isn't that big, but this 25% uh, to 20% is kind of, a, kind of an issue for Zeus, but I think Zeus is... Just doesn't really tip any of the tier list very much for Zeus. I think he's not going to feel it that much. But maybe the um, maybe your uh, your what do you call it? The timing on getting the centaur upgrade, uh, Sylvan Law, is going to be thrown off because of that. So you may have to put some a villager on favor just a little bit earlier than you would normally. Um, beside an increased trade route bonus from ten percent to fifteen percent. What? What? Why? I'm confused. What is this? Oh, the trap. But still, I don't, I don't understand. Does, does everyone, is this just like trying to put Poseidon in line with everyone else? Oh, it's Poseidon's God bonus. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I didn't even know that. Hippocamp campus now spawns when the first dock is built. That's just the same thing as the Raven. It doesn't really change anything. Because uh, that unit is kind of useless, unfortunately. It's good for like tanking tanking in um in like archer ship fights, but other than that, militia now benefit from Phobos Spear of Panic technology. Okay, that doesn't do much. Change the age Miss Diago is available. Okay, I like that. Poseidon getting Diago in Heroic Age. <coughs> That's really good. Um, Heroes, the Argo increased, uh, reduced its crash armor, through the speed. Okay, just a bunch of buffs for the Argo. Um, not sure why you care so much about this unit, but it's nice to have a hero unit on the water when you don't really have much response to, to myth units on the water. It does mean that Poseidon can fight against Zeus very, very well now on water because Zeus could just go fast heroic or semi-fast heroic and then get out Scarlet and then Poseidon had nothing to do to counter that. Uh, Bolt reduced damage, Delta Sun of for plus 2%, 3%. Uh, I like that. Bolt should do a little bit of damage. I like that it doesn't kill them anymore, but um, it should probably do about half their health, I reckon. Uh, Citadel Greeks can now train physicians as they would in a normal town center. Physicians are physicians are a really really strong addition to Greek. They it's like they make uh, they make EE Greek so much stronger than Voodly Greek. Like you should always get out one physician. Um, think about it this way: you cut you cut a villager, but every single time your physician heals a unit, that's resources it's gathering. Because they're not having to rebuild that unit. So just think about it that way. Uh, Sentinels. Oh, this one was always interesting. Sentinels, you now get five Sentinels instead of the uh, the four Sentinels. 
it doesn't really change a whole lot, but it's just like a nice little bonus for going Hades, knowing that you're probably gonna be fine from any early aggression. Uh, also, you can garrison your Sentinels inside of a Heliopoli and bring them to the front of uh, your opponent's base and then start killing them with, uh, with Sentinels. It's pretty cute. Underworld Passage Increased Pierce Armor. Not sure I like that, but whatever. It doesn't change much. I just don't understand why you'd make that change. Um, and I don't know what that does. Or, uh, Lord of Horses is kind of a useless upgrade. Fluid or Spear. Yeah, we, that's already been said. Temple of Healing. I like that that's cheaper because it's not a very good upgrade. Um, reduce the cost of research. Now it provides its benefits to the Argo. Uh, that's good. That's too much uh, for a water uh, water ship upgrade. Whereas this is like you can think about getting it there. Okay, units. Carcanos. No one builds that. Chiron. Increased movement speed. Okay, Chiron. Getting the increased movement speed is really important for Hades because Hades does not have a good um, a good response for like anything uh, anything speed related in myth units like. Doesn't Hades just really struggled against um, against centaurs and also getting the bonus damage against the Nidhogg to one hundred and ten percent? Eh, whatever. Does that also apply to the uh, Odysseus and or is it just because Karen has less attack? Not sure. Cyclops, Cyclops is getting a buff, but they're still not as strong as um, as Minotaur. They're just not. They cost too much. Their, their special attack doesn't go off because if you can if you just micro like half decently they just can't use their special um, gastrophides reduce cost this is good gastrophides are a really strong unit um you should build them um heteroi doesn't matter what you do with heteroi their issue isn't in cost in damage and i mean if they're either going to be too strong or they're just going to be too weak they they just get picked off really really easily by towers uh, Hippolyta also gets the bonus, so that's good. Medusa getting the reduced favor cost. I'm not sure what the point in this is, but it does buff Hera, which is good. Um, Pegasus is now down to one population. It should always have been one population, so that's good. Same upgrade. Bonus there, Heavy and Champion Archers plus two is good. Perseus going up. Getting buffs for Perseus, getting buffs for healing physician. Here we go, 60 food to 60 wood as well, which makes the position even better. And Polyphemus can now start bashing down buildings better. So this is just basically a quality of life upgrade for the Greek heroes, looks like. And these special units did need a little bit of a touch up. Again, I don't think Heteroi are going to be ever used, just because they get killed too fast by towers. Perseus got a huge... Oh, I didn't see that. Reduced reduced bonus damage to one from 1,000 to 500. That's because he can one-hit units, so he's got, a, he's got a purpose. His purpose is not to, like, kill units. You don't want to be, like, whacking away with Perseus. You kind of want to hit and run, Um, I guess. Dwarves now deal 100% bonus for Siege. If they didn't do that before, that was a mistake. Um, Odin increased unit regen. Okay, here's where we get to see all the Odin buffs. So Odin is actually in a really good spot right now. So we'll see why that is. This increased HP bonus regen is great. You want to micro your units as Odin really, really well. Because if you can save it, that's resources saved. Similar to the physician, you just need to run him away for 30 seconds and then and then he's back to full HP and you're ready to go. Um, Thor, Hammer of the Gods Meteor is now available now affect all the same units as regular upgrades. Did they not affect the same upgrades as regular upgrades before? Okay, Undermine increased damage. It doesn't really matter. Undermine's still not gonna be able to kill anything. It's gonna help you take down a town center, I guess, but it's still, it's still Undermine. I had an idea about something for Undermine to make it stronger, but I, I can't remember what it was, so. That's fine. Walking Woods gets a nerf, except you can now command it. Walking Woods is really, really strong now. It's so it's super strong. Um, so what you can do is you can do like a like a six minute fast heroic on like a water map, uh, and then like cast uh, cast Walking Woods and Undermine on their town center, and then kill their town center while they're trying to kill you on water. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And then, and then you can just like walk the walking woods around and kill all the villagers. <laughs> um, 
but obviously they die very fast against like heroes. Um, I think that maybe Walking Woods is too strong and they might need a timer, like a two minute timer or something, like a, or even a minute timer, like Ancestors. And maybe you could change it so that you can cast it anywhere instead of just on top of trees. So it's basically just Ancestors. Um, but I'm not sure. I haven't played around with it much. Still, Scardy is just just super good because Frost is incredible, uh, and Frost Giants are incredible. Having food based units in the in the heroic age is just not work. It just doesn't work for for Norse because they just don't have the excess food. They can't get it in. Okay, Axa Must Spell is reduced. That's the bonus damage against. Yeah, that's the bonus damage against um, flying units. And that's just simply amazing. You need that. That's really good. Berserker Gang, reduce the health bonus for Ulf Sarks from 20% to 15%. Why? Berserker Gang is really... It's already like a ridiculously expensive... I'm just... I'm biased though. I'm biased. I like Ulf Sarks and you're nerfing my Ulf Sark. Like, as if anybody even actually has a problem with Berserker Gang. That doesn't make sense. Give me my, give me, give me my health back, man. Burning Pitch, bonus, whatever. That's fine. Ballister, oh, we're already strong. Bravery, increased bonus damage, dot buildings. Bravery is already strong, man. That doesn't make sense. Call of Valhalla, reduce the health bonus 20% to 15%. Again, nerfing my Ulf Sark. Why? Why are you nerfing Ulf Sark? You spend so much resources to get these upgrades. It hurts me. It hurts my soul. It hurts my soul, okay? Eld Rimmer Kettle, reduce the special duration. I don't know what that does. <laughs> uh, ring Giver, just a buff, straight up buff, 40, 20 seconds instead of 40 seconds. That's good, but again, oh, actually, now that now that uh, Njord is a good, decent god, this is actually good. Um, Y'all going going um, like semi fast heroics against Ra or something, and um, going through Yord and then using the Walking Woods to distract while your economy gets like like stabilizers is, is and then and then getting out Y'all with Ring Giver is a really good option against against Ra. Okay, Battle Ball reduce movement speed. Good Battle Ball were too strong. Bog Spike reduce training time to nine seconds is fine. These units weren't getting used very much, um, and they now also don't have a special their own special upgrade. So you get, you get medium infantry and then you get medium box fire. They're still archer units though, which is something that does annoy me a little bit because that was kind of what was part of uh, uh, Norse's identity was they didn't have any archers and now you just give them archers because, but hey, they didn't have archers. But can't do anything, it's in there now. And here are already strong units. These units are so strong, but movement speed bonus is great. They can run around faster, so it does make them stronger. Uh, expect to see um, expect to see Heimdall getting picked um, against certain gods like Atlantean over Freya, but Freya is still just super strong because you get the Valkyrie and Valkyrie is just you get if you get speedy. It's like part of classical age is just getting a speedy myth unit so you can attack fast. Fenris Wolf reduced bonus reduced its boost from twenty percent to eighty percent of its boost range. Why are you touching Fenris Wolves? They already don't. Everyone still laughs at them. They're not that good on the Titans. I never understand these like shifting in in um in stats things. Like we took two percent off the boost, but then we gave five boost range to it. Cool. Whatever. Why'd you do it? I don't get it. All right, Kraken reduced the favor cost. That's actually cool. That's one of the one of the myth units you might actually see someone make because it can one hit units, and it's really strong. Um, but again, I but Norse can't gather favor, so when they fight water, so you can't even get them out. Uh, portable ram increased health. Hakama portable ram is really weak units, so I guess the bonus is good. That does help Norse out quite a bit. Throwing axemen increased bonus damage against fanatics is fine. Ulf Sark, ooh, here we go. We gave him again the extra health in. Okay, I, I get it now. This is why you took the, the health bonuses away because we gave him an extra five health. So we can't have him getting the extra 20% and the extra five, all the extra 5% here. 
fine. Fine. It's fine. It's fine, guys. This is all better. I feel better now. Increased dock building speed. This is really good as well. This helps. This helps Norse out quite a bit. Dock building speed means that you get that dock up and you can get the food out a little bit faster. Everything comes just a little bit faster. Hill fort range increased to 20. Ah, whatever. It's fine. Having 18 and or 20, it's, it's the same. I don't think anyone really notices that. Okay, well, there's my rundown of the... Um, of the, the Age Mythology 2.7 patch. Um, let me know what you think. And if you if you think any of the changes are busted, then uh, let me know and we'll, uh, we'll hash it out. Anyways, I'm gonna sign off for now. If, you, uh, if you're watching me and you haven't followed, uh, please uh, please check out the stream and let's see what's going on there. Uh, my name's Boyd and I'll see you guys